Delta Airlines and Wheels Up announcing a partnership today. Here's what Delta CEO Ed Bastian had to say on Squawk Box earlier. We're excited to do the deal with Kenny and the Wheels Up team. Uh, we're essentially going to be merging our Delta private jets into the Wheels Up platform, and we'll come away as an equity investor and, and owner in the new company. It's a way for us to extend our, our brand and extend our ability into a new space. We're not going to have it stuck as DPJ is kind of under Mother Delta. It's going to be alongside Delta so that we can actually enjoy the benefits and kind of have a lot more transparency and growth opportunities for both brands. Right, joining us now uh, to talk more about the partnership, Kenny Dichter, uh, Wheels Up co-founder and CEO. Kenny, uh, it's good to see you. Normally we see you on set, um, but this is great. It, it, did he finally just, he was fed up with, with when you're going through the TSA lines and you look down, you're putting your shoes in and he sees the wheels. He just finally said, I can't take this anymore. That, that too, too many customers are like, here I am, you know, getting frisked without my shoes and I could be on wheels. I think Bastion just said, I, if you can't beat him, join him, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he did. And, uh, you know, to partner with the number one airline in the world, uh, all levels, brand, service, revenue, uh, an incredible validation for Wheels Up. And we're here because of Ed and his team. Uh, they share the same culture. Uh, they take care of the customer in the same way that we do. And again, a perfect match. It seems, you know, I don't know the details, Kenny. And, and you know, sometimes we, we need to see that because yeah. it seems like a quantum leap forward uh, for wheels up. But, but I think we, we need to know more. I mean, you can't tell us about the equity investment. You've got some blue chip investors already. What do you got? What, T. Rowe? And, and well, we, we have T. Rowe, T. Rowe, Fidelity and Franklin, and Delta becomes our largest investor. And we think about our members, Joe, and, and look, 90 to 95 percent of our members have a commercial uh, play in their portfolio, meaning that uh, folks use the private uh, jet uh, in an on-demand way it wheels up. But again, there's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of commercial spend at wheels up. And to, I have their arms around them when they're flying on the wheels up fleet to have Ed and his group uh, take care of them when they're flying commercially. That's a huge benefit of this partnership. And on the converse, uh, you know, Ed's got some special customers, the first and the business class customers. When we can pull them on the King Air last mile, they go from Reno to Atlanta and they want to go over to Sea Island. Uh, you know, we're, we're a logical last mile solution for all the Delta customers. Yeah. That's a billion dollar speaking, opportunity. So it's just uh, huge Island opportunities there. for both hey, companies. To, de to democratize uh, th this service, obviously five grand an hour or whatever it is, if you're just yes. taking your family, it's still going to be tough. We talked about, Ed, that if you could size and scale this thing up where a citation had all eight seats filled, if you divide 5,000 by, you know, eight paying customers, you could get closer to, to democratization. But you need size and you need a computer system matching people that are going some of these places at the same time. It seems like a logistical nightmare that would be very expensive. Could you ever do that? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I would tell you this, Joe. It's the technology is available. It's at our fingertips. If you look at Open Table, you look at Airbnb, right. they enable large groups of people and operators to come together and create efficiency and utility. Uh, we're going to be able to do that with Delta. They do have the scale. They have the customers. And again, crowdsourcing is not a, a new phenomena, but uh, technology is going to enable all of that. And again, it's a huge reason uh, that we're coming together with Delta to create those efficiencies at scale. And ultimately, like Uber did in New York to the yellow cab business, uh, we're going to create pricing that's sharper than it is today hey, Kenny, using that technology. It's awesome to see you, and it's, it's thrilling to see the growth of this company over all these years. I remember when you first came on uh, and had just started Wheels Up, so uh, it, this is a great moment. After Marquee Jet. But one of the questions I, I would have for you about this idea of democratizing air travel and, get, and filling yeah. up all eight seats or 12 seats, uh, depending on, uh, on what kind of uh, a body plane it is, is what therefore is also going to come with it, which is to say, do you think the FAA, do you think regulators start to say, look, actually, we are going to have to have security. We are going to have to have metal detectors. The, the, the process is going to change if, if private aviation moves towards a crowdsourced flight, which is different than a genuinely private flight. Well, I, I would say this. In Part 135, how we operate, uh, we are absolutely in sync with the FAA and the DOT on regulation, right. and our pilots fulfill the TSA responsibilities. So there's ID checks, and it's actually, in a, very, in a way, it's, it's more intimate, uh, the back and forth. Our, our customers, our members, they check the pilot IDs. So there is a, 
a process. We're big fans of TSA. Look, when I fly commercial, I fly Delta. Uh, I put my shoes in the bin like everybody else. Incredible respect for TSA. Uh, I've been operating, Joe, I heard you mention Marquee and NetJet, and, you know, yeah. that's where I got my start, Warren yeah. and Richard Santulli. Um, we've been operating, and our whole industry has been operating under a very, very stringent TSA, you know, sort of protocol, and, and that just continues on here. And, again, TSA does a great job. We're well within the FAA and DOT regs every day uh, that we operate. So that, hey, I don't see that as an issue at all. Kenny, um there has been great growth. We had one of your competitors on. We don't need to mention which name it was, but he doesn't own the Jets. I think 80% or at least or something, or doesn't own them. He pointed to your business model in that you're at risk in a recession by owning so many Jets, and you need capital raises. I'm wondering if this is another capital raise. I'm just wondering, are you getting closer to where... Uh, the, the cash flow would, would make it less likely you need future capital raises. And, and in a downturn, if there was a serious 2008 type event, are you vulnerable no. at that point owning all of the equipment? Well, Joe, the, the future business opportunity for us, I think we got into the business owning King Airs and leasing uh, Citation XLs and Tens. That was a branding exercise for us. The future of our business is much more of an asset light business model, an Airbnb, an open table, where we're safety vetting and verifying, safety vet and verify uh, partners. Uh, they come onto the platform, and that's really how you capitalize the business. I think when I think about what Bezos went through, and I heard that uh, he was named by uh, his peers as the number one executive of the decade, he built his business in the books. That was expensive and heavy. Today, books are 4.3% of Amazon's revenue. One day, our owned and operated fleet is going to be 4.3% of our revenue, okay. and that day is coming fast. How much, so how much of your I'm fleet not worried is owned about and operated it. right now, and how much of your revenue is from your owned and operated fleet right now, Kenny? Well, I would say, Becky, we got three buckets of revenue, and I love them all. Uh, the first one is the membership model. We're, we're approaching $100 million, you know, a year or two out in membership revenue. That's our Costco, our Amazon Prime revenue uh, that our members support us on to, to, to own and operate the fleet. So we love that bucket. The fleet is probably 70, 75 percent of our revenue today, and off fleet, our marketplace revenues are 25. I'll say here, I'll be on the show in about two or three years, and those two buckets are going to be flipped. Our on fleet's going to be 2025, and our off fleet 7580. So we're moving that direction already. Uh, we're doing digital bookings where there's no touch outside of three pushes on your smartphone, and you get your airplane. So everything we're doing is, uh, is taking us to asset light. Uh, we'll never not have King Airs or Excels or Tens. Textron's been a great partner to date there. 119 airplanes on a Textron brand and fleet. But ultimately, our fleet is going to be thousands of airplanes that are off balance sheet and a couple of hundred that are on balance sheet. So we have a, a core and a control uh, that we need to be the best brand in the business. Well, Delta... Um I was thinking there could be a lot of others uh, that, that I wouldn't be nearly as, uh, that's, that's brand name, that's number one. That's pretty amazing. That I, I would think that that has to be a, uh, a bit of a uh, of confidence builder for the business model for the future for, for you, Kenny. So uh, I'm glad you brought it to us today here. Incre yeah. Incredible validation, and everybody, Squawk Box has been there uh, since day one, uh, six and a half years, and to be in the Delta Museum today and, and announcing this deal I uh, couldn't be prouder of everybody who yeah. works for Wheels Up, all our members and everybody that got behind us in, uh, in getting the business together.